All right, hey everybody, how's it going? Um, so just to kind of piggyback off of that uh, five minute video uh, that I uh, put out a little earlier. So pretty much the, I guess really the best update that I can give uh, for this video, because as I mentioned in the other video, uh, there's been a couple of people uh, just kind of wanting an update uh, I guess as far as, you know, any helpful information, like, whatever, I'm not sure what they may be, uh, you know, thinking of or, or about, but basically, I mean, it's a pretty solid job, I gotta say, uh, they, at, le at least at my location, at my location, uh, I'm in Dallas, Texas, and so, you know, maybe it, it could vary from station to station. I really don't know, but I do know at my location, everybody that I work with, uh, the, you know, the dispatch people, the management team, they're all pretty good. Uh, you know they're not trying to get on to anybody unless somebody does something you know to their self puts their self in a jam you know speeding driving you know crazy running stop signs whatever whatever could get them in trouble but even then they still don't like to get on to people they do because it's their job and they want to make sure everybody's out here being safe but uh, at the end of the day it's a pretty good job uh, as a as far as on a scale of one to ten, as far as easy to difficult, I would say as long as you're doing what you're supposed to do, it can be easy. But somehow, some people make it difficult on themselves. It, it it seems like. And don't get me wrong, some days are a, cake, a cakewalk, some days aren't very easy. There's going to be days where you might have 15 deliveries and they might all be apartments, or at least majority apartments, 8 apartments, 10 apartments, 14 apartments, you know, and those aren't that fun when they're three stories and uh, you have these totes, you know. Um, cases of water and you know stuff like that yeah you have a little dolly but are you going to wheel that dolly up three flights of stairs I'm not and I don't know if you really can to be honest but um, so you know yeah it can be a little bit difficult but I've worked for Amazon delivery before and you know uh coming off a of fedex express uh, as far as delivery jobs go this has got to be one of the easiest unless except for maybe you know medical delivery drivers like where you deliver medical supplies medical equipment uh maybe like medicines uh you know stuff like that that might be a little easier. I, I don't know. I don't know anything about that. I don't have any experience in that or anything. But as far as like the the main, you know, UPS or uh, FedEx, FedEx Ground, you know, whatever, this is easier than all of those. And uh, I mean, really, it's pretty much, you know. Whatever, whatever your shift is, if you go in in the morning or you go in in the afternoon, it doesn't matter. Whenever you go into work, you clock in. Uh, I'll say the only thing that, I mean, it's not really a big complaint, really, but uh, the only thing that irritates me is sometimes we're having to wait around. Uh, you know, I mean, we're, we're clocked in and we're getting paid while we wait, but at the same time, like for me, I, I come in at 1, uh, 1 p.m. And so, you know, when like it's 2 o'clock or 2.15 and I'm getting my route 
and my first delivery or maybe my first couple of deliveries are due at two o'clock you know two to between one and two o'clock uh, that's a little irritating because then you got to call dispatch and or uh, not dispatch but uh what's it called uh, there's a like a ccoe number or you know dispatch also it's kind of the same number but uh anyways you have to call them and get like a ticket number because of the fact that you're not going to make those two deliveries on time but it can really make it difficult to get caught up to the rest of your deliveries so every delivery that you're going to be behind on uh you have to call and have that uh customer added to your ticket and uh you don't get a bunch of different ticket numbers it's just one ticket so if you're for whatever reason late to all your deliveries or if you're just late to one it all it all goes under the same ticket they just type in the ticket number and i guess it shows like the the ones that were uh late and the whole purpose is to alert the customer to let them know that you know hey your delivery is going to be 15 minutes behind due to traffic or or whatever and so uh yeah overall I mean, I won't necessarily say I won't necessarily say it's easy, but it's consistent. It's just uh, I mean, it's not that difficult. And the way that the routes are set up, majority of the time, they're not putting that much on you. They seem to be allowing for uh, you know road closures, uh, traffic, you know, mid five o'clock traffic. Uh, morning time traffic I haven't been on the morning shift yet so I don't really I, I'm sure it's pretty much the same thing but they seem to try to uh, a lot some time in there uh, so that way you have a little bit of a grace period to uh, to try to make your stops on time and like I said a while ago that's not always uh, the easiest thing to do sometimes it's just out of your control you know uh, you, you can't control the flow of traffic like when it's 5 4 4 30 in the afternoon and you're going through a busy city like uh, more times than not I have to go through Irving uh, I'm either going to uh, you know Fort Worth or one of the surrounding towns uh, majority of the time either Fort Worth or um, that or that general direction I, I seem to keep having to go through Irving and man the traffic it gets pretty rough and so yeah you know it, it is what it is and it's nothing for you to really freak out about because the only thing that you're going to get in trouble for is if you don't call uh, that number to get so that you can get a ticket number that you'll get in trouble for but as long as you do that it, uh, it's fine and uh, I, I, I really like the fact that they seem to be I won't say laid back but they're not all just over you all the time constantly um, you know getting on to you for things that are imp impossible to get done you know uh, and it may be like that across the board with this Kroger delivery uh, you know from warehouse to warehouse I really just don't know but I know at my location everybody seems to be pretty good and I don't have a complaint about any individual person um, and yeah uh, I gotta admit I mean going from FedEx Express to Kroger delivery I think so far I'm happy I made that jump uh, you know it was a little concerning because per hour I was making a little bit more per hour at my previous job compared to what I'm making here but uh, supposedly the you get some uh, pr pretty quick uh, little raises here don't quote me on this because I really can't recall I want to say you get a raise in six months 
and I haven't been here that long, so I, I don't know 100%, but I want to say you get a raise in six months, and then you get one more raise in a year, and then I, I think it's yearly, uh, you get yearly raises after that, if I'm not mistaken. Again, don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure the guy that did my interview, uh, that's what he told me. Um, that's the only time that, I, that I've discussed that with anybody. So it's been you know enough time now. I really can't remember exactly, but I'm pretty pretty sure that's how, how that goes. So uh, yeah, I mean you'll get apartments, uh, houses. Uh, apparently, there's a few routes where you actually go to uh, some Kroger grocery stores uh, to to deliver. So. You got your truck at the, you know, when you go when you go to work at the warehouse, you clock in, you get your route. Sometimes your whole route will just be going to deliver groceries to the grocery store, and then uh, I want to say the groceries that you deliver to the grocery store, uh, I think it might be Spark, uh, you know, the Spark, you know, delivery people. They come and they get those groceries and uh you know take them to the uh apartments houses wherever they're going to be going so i haven't had that opportunity to do that you know so i, I don't know uh, pretty much what i said is i believe how that goes so but yeah i, I would say definitely if you don't have a job currently or uh you have a job and you're making, I would say, even if you're making 20 an hour at my location, the starting pay is 1840 currently. Um, I don't know what it used to be or, you know, if it's going to change or, or not change, I really don't know. But whatever I was coming on, uh, is 1840 was the starting pay. And um, at my previous job, I think the starting pay went up just a little bit recently so I think the starting pay is around like 20 something like that 20 and some change I want to say um, but whenever I left there I was there for a year and a half so I was there just long enough to basically get you know get a raise and they also back in October gave us a cost of living raise um, so when I left there I was making 21 I don't remember exactly what I was making, 20, $21.51 an hour maybe, uh, pretty close to that, it was 21 and some change. Um, so, you know, making less than an hour per hour, that was, uh, you know, a little concerning, but uh, at the same time, I was, you know, really kind of hoping, not only hoping, but a, a few people that I know actually uh, started working there before I did. And so talking with them, I heard that I can get a few more hours and that's not, that's not a big issue. You know, they're not going to, uh, basically they're not gonna keep you from getting overtime is how that's working right now. Could, that could change in the future. Uh, but as of right now, you know, there's no talks about, oh, there's too much overtime or any of that. They have, they have, uh, Schedules. If you want to sign up for more overtime, you're more than welcome to. Uh, you know, to come in on your days off, or uh, I wouldn't really, really recommend. Like, if you're, let's say, you come in at 1 p.m. I'm, I'm, I don't, I'm not so sure if I would recommend trying to come in to do a morning shift and then roll over into your regular shift for that day, just because. Uh, It could cause a problem because you know we're DOT certified, uh, you know, drivers, and being the fact that we're DOT, you know, there's rules and regulations that we have to follow. You can only drive a certain amount of hours a day. You can only be on the clock a certain amount of hours a day, and then whenever you get off the clock, you can't clock in for another. Uh, I want to say 11 hours. I want to say you gotta have like a, a 10 hour or 11 hour uh, break in between from when you clock out to when you clock back in. And obviously the whole purpose is so that 
we get the rest that we need uh, so we don't get into accidents. You know, because us being human beings, given the opportunity, uh, you know, a lot of us will work, 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 work until they tell us to stop. And, uh, you know, I'm somebody that, you know, if I'm not careful, I can get myself in that situation because who doesn't want more money? But, you know, at the same time, it becomes dangerous at a certain point because then you're tired. Uh, already, just in the short amount of time, I think I've been here for about a month total from my interview, you know, to, to now. I think it's been maybe like a, about a month. Uh, it feels like a month anyway. It's either been three weeks or a month. And so, just in that small amount of time, there's been dozens of accidents. People, uh, you know, hitting canopies and everything else, messing up the trucks, uh, you know, not simply just not paying attention. And uh, so, you know, I don't mean to get off on, on uh, get off track here on something else, but uh, let me let me re redirect myself so I can stay on track here. So yeah, basically the update is. I'm glad that I made the move that I made. Uh, I'm happy with it. Um, I hope that later down the line, uh, Kroger comes up with some kind of a program. Uh, I don't know what that would look like, but I wish they would come up with some kind of program for uh, people that would like to uh, obtain their CDL license. Uh, you know, they don't have anything like that. They just currently uh they just hire people with experience you know if you have about i would probably guess six months to a year's year experience as a truck driver those are the type of people that they're hiring uh you know to become truck drivers so i would really like to see kroger come up with some sort of program uh, again i don't know what that would look like or anything but it would be nice if they could come up with something uh, with that so because you know realistically I don't know about anybody else but I don't want to you know this job can't last me forever uh, I have you know three children and I got plenty of bills um, so you know even if my pay gets up to 21 22 an hour that's unfortunately just not enough in this current uh, economy that we have going on right now. Uh, so it's good enough for now. Uh, but I would like to, you know, I'm 33 years old. I just turned 33 on the 19th of August. So I'm not getting any younger. And you know, it, it eventually I may uh, be getting into real estate. And, you know, hopefully all that goes well and everything later on. Uh, but if I, if I didn't have the real estate thing that I'm working on, then my fallback is to uh, get my CDO license and be a truck driver. Uh, and it would be really nice if... I can get my CDL license and become a truck driver for Kroger since I, I'm already working for Kroger. That way I can continue to, uh, you know, put money towards my retirement and, um, and stuff, you know. So if anybody wants to become a truck driver and specifically if they ever want to deliver for Kroger, the issue is when you go to school to get your CDL license, that's full time. So, I mean, you, you you can't work and do that at the same time. It's one or the other, you can't do both. Because literally, five days a week, you go to class from, you know, it might vary a little bit, but majority of them is basically 7.30 in the morning to about 5, 5.30 in the afternoon, something like that. And in a lot of cases, you have to go out of state to some of these places. I'm not saying you have to go out of state, but uh, some, you know, some of the options are out of state for the training. And so, yeah, um, 
that's pretty much all I got there, you know. I, and if the only thing I have to complain about is having to sit around and wait for the uh, uh, for, for for them to assign me a route, and it's not anything that the dispatcher people can do about it. They have to wait until uh, a a truck is ready to go, uh, because while we're sitting waiting, they are loading up the trucks uh, with the people's orders and getting that that route together. And so, you know, there's not really that, that much that could be done about that. I would say, uh, I don't. If there is, I don't know what they could do to make that any better. It's not horrible by any means. I mean, most people get their routes around you know i would say some right a lot of them are right away um it's usually only like maybe four or five six people that are there any more than you know 45 minutes and so it's not horrible but you know it's just one of those things you just have to deal with and just remember you're on the clock while you're sitting there and you know whenever you get your route you get your route but like I say, there's a significant amount of time that's built into your route to where uh, even if you're behind to start with, eventually you'll be caught up. Uh, even if you have to work through your 30 minute break and just complete your route and then take your 30 minute break, uh, or uh, even complete your route, get back to your station, and as long as your station allows it, uh, take your 30 minute break there while you're at the station, you know, yeah, you're having to sit there and wait around, but uh, By not taking your break, you know In theory that they seem to want you to take your break uh, Like, you know, you'll have a certain amount of stops that you do and then at a certain point uh, It is safe to take a break well That's just not realistic because in reality they they you know you got you got traffic you people get in car wrecks so now there's traffic that's not accounted for uh there's roads that are sh uh you know shut down in neighborhoods because they got half the road torn up because they're they're re uh completely redoing the roads and you know stuff like that that is it's going to make your day longer for one and then it's going to take longer to get to uh, you know certain stops so with that being said if that's what I have to worry about I'll take that any day because <laughs> there's a lot worse jobs out there than uh, you know delivering some groceries so <clears throat> yeah uh, anybody that watches this video I would say it's definitely worth it uh, now, to a certain extent, it's up to you to decide if it's worth it or not, because I don't know any of y'all's uh, circumstances or uh, what type of uh, you know knowledge or experience or degrees that any of of y'all of y'all may uh, may have. But uh, hang on one second. Um, but yeah, I will say if you're, if you're looking to, uh, just quickly, uh, get a, a job that, uh, you're not going to be overly stressed about and that pays, you know, fairly decently and if it's something you can hang in there for just a little bit, because essentially if you can hang in there for one year, you'll have three raises because in six months you get a raise six months after that that's when you're there for a year you get a raise then and then um okay well never mind i guess you get you'll, you'll get two raises in one year so uh disregard what i was gonna say but either way to get a raise in six months you know that's pretty good most places don't give you a raise until you're there for a year um and even then sometimes you still don't get a raise it depends on what's going on with the company so, um, yeah, I, I would say it's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it. Uh, at the very least, it's 100% worth giving it a shot. And uh, 
that I, that I can say. Um, so far, I haven't regretted it. And I'm, uh, as a matter of fact, yesterday I had almost nothing but apartments, and the majority of those apartments were on the third floor. And uh, I think I had like I want to say seven. I had like seven apartments. Uh, I had a three-story motel. Uh, however, that the three-story motel had an elevator, so that wasn't too bad. Um, and then I had, what else did I have? No, I, okay, I guess I had seven apartments in one, uh, motel, uh, in a few residential houses. So, you know, with the, and, and, you know, I'm not gonna lie to you, it was a little bit rough. Um, but, I mean, if that's the worst thing I gotta deal with, that's fine. Um, you know, they, cause like I say, the management, uh, people, uh, and, you know, dispatch and everybody, as long as you make the call that you need to make to get you a ticket number, you're fine. You're not going to get written up. You're not going to get yelled at. You're not going to get in trouble. And, uh, cause the fact is a lot of the time, I, I would say majority of the time, really, uh, like there's no way that you're going to be late to every stop every time every day and if you are then you know they might pull you to the side and have a chat with you about what's going on what can they do to help what can they do to make it better because the delivery service with kroger i want to say it's only been around for about two years uh it could be a little bit more it could be a little bit less i don't know the exact month uh they rolled this program out but basically somewhere around the, the two-year mark so when it comes to delivery service, it seems like they got most of the uh, kinks worked out, but, uh, you know, they're, they're, regardless of that, they're consistently uh, looking to improve. So at my station, and it may be the same across the board, like I say, I don't know, I can only give you my experience with the people that I work with, um, but definitely uh, they continue to uh, seem interested in you know how did my route go um, you know if they're basically if there's any problems they want to know about it so that way they can try to um, you know make everything as realistic as possible for the delivery drivers uh, you know because on one hand we you know they want to make sure that we service all of the customers uh, but at the same time, they know they can only do so much on one route because, uh, I mean, come on, that's just the way it is. And we go 90 directions, or 90, we go 90 miles in any direction uh, from our station. So, you know, that's, that's pretty far. And then sometimes, like, for example, yesterday, I had to go to Carrollton, Texas, and then I had to go to... Uh, Grand Prairie and I had to do that I had to go to, from Carrollton to Grand Prairie back to Carrollton uh, back to either Dallas or Grand Prairie and then my last stop ended up being back to Carrollton so uh, you know sometimes there's a lot of driving but then there's a, a good amount of routes it's only in Dallas now Dallas is a pretty big city you know square mile wise so that doesn't necessarily mean a whole lot and plus you got traffic and all that stuff you got to deal with too in dallas but sometimes you'll get lucky and you'll have more stops but they'll either be all in the same city or you're only going to like you know maybe two or three little uh cities and yeah yesterday i mean out of you know i guess about two four weeks of driving on my own uh Yesterday was the only bad day. I mean, if, you know, if you want to call it a bad day, like it's really hard to have a bad enough day where you're just really like wiped out. Uh, the only thing really causing anybody to just get completely exhausted is this Texas heat, you know. So I, I want to say I got up to like 110 yesterday. 
which was a record that was tied with, I don't know, like the year 2000 or 2002, some, something like that. But, uh, yeah, I got up to 110 yesterday. So that was pretty crazy. Uh, if anybody has any comments, concerns, questions, uh, feel free to leave a comment and I'll try to get back to your, uh, you know, I'll, I'll try to respond to your questions as soon as possible. And hopefully, uh, if I don't get to it soon enough, then somebody else uh, that watches the video or, you know, gets into the comments section, uh, hopefully they can answer a question or two for you as well. Oh, and also, uh, somebody asked me if they do drug testing. So, you know, you're, you're getting a job to be a delivery driver. During the hiring process, when you take your DOT physical, the, the DOT physical, even though it's called the DOT physical, it's really like any other physical. You know, uh, you cover up one, one eye at a time and you read the, the letters going across the chart and uh, you read basically as much as you can on that. And, uh, you know, it, it's like any other physical, it's, but it, it's just so that you can get your DOT certification. So it's not anything special that they do that they don't do for other physicals, you know. So if you've ever had a physical before, it's literally the exact same thing. It's just the uh, the doctor or the NP or the nurse, whoever whoever it is that's doing your your physical, um, they just sign off. You know, they sign their their name on there that you passed or you didn't pass, and so. Um, yeah, to answer that question, and I know I answered it in the in the comment, but uh, just so everybody knows, yes, they drug test. Now, I will say they don't random. They don't, as of right now, they don't do random drug testing. Uh, I mean, I guess if they see that there's an issue or something, obviously they can change that at any moment, if you know whenever they see fit, but. They don't do like uh, just random drug testing on everybody. Uh, as far as I can tell, the only drug testing they they, they don't even do the drug testing, uh, you know, at the facility or anything. It's just you do the drug test whenever you um, do your DOT physical, and you know, going through that process, you know, uh, yeah, pretty much you'll go and pee in a cup. And then after you pee in the cup, then you'll go ahead and uh, do your DOT physical. At least for me, that's how it was set up. It was done, they were done simultaneously, pretty much. Um, so, outside of doing a drug test for that, um, I, I guess they don't do a drug test after that. I mean, you know, if you're coming up in there and you're smelling like weed every day, and you know, like you can you can give them a reason to make you go take a drug test. That's all I'm gonna say about that. Um, so you know, do what you will uh, with that information. But essentially, they don't do random drug testing, as far as I know, and at this particular time at my location. Uh, but again, if you give them a reason to, yeah, they'll. They'll make you take a uh, drug test. You know, I, I would recommend like don't be coming in there <laughs> uh, smelling like anything. You know what I mean? Uh, and also, it ha it have a lot to do, I would say, with everybody that works around you as well. Uh, you know, that that could be a determining factor, but. Yeah. Just basically, don't don't be on any drugs while you're out here. You know, trying to deliver. You know, like don't 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 be actively high while you're trying to deliver groceries. You know, uh, any anything bad can happen. I mean, you know. So be professional. Be an adult. When you go to work, work. Whatever you do, you know on your off time or whatever, that, that's your deal. But, 
Uh, you know, it's not just your safety you have to worry about. It's everybody else's. Uh, you know, it doesn't, it, honestly, it doesn't take much for you to get into a wreck with somebody and kill that person. And then your life is ruined for the rest of your life. So, yeah, you know. And by the way, most jobs, you have to take a drug test. Especially if you're operating a vehicle or heavy machinery. Um, you know, anything, if you're impaired, could really cause yourself harm or harm to other people. Obviously, yeah, you're going to have to take a drug test. You know, that's common sense. So, that's all I got to say about that. And as far as my update goes, that's pretty much it. Uh, I, I got to say, so far, I, I would pretty much recommend this job to anybody. In fact, uh, there's a few people that I know that, you know, I want to let them know how things are going. And, uh, you know, let them know it's, it's worth giving it a shot. Especially, like I say... It depends on your, your your own background. I mean, you know, uh, if you don't have a lot of experience or you don't have a degree in anything, uh, it's, a, it's a good job to start with. And then, you know, at, at least until you figure out something else later down the line. But as far as, in, you know, immediately, it's worth it. And I'm not stressed out at all about this job. And I don't know if part of it is because of my my previous delivery experience or what uh i mean i think it's a combination of that and just how they seem to operate at my location so uh i guess that's pretty much all i had to say so far and I'll, I'll i'll put some more updated videos out later whenever i get you know more experience uh you know any issues that come along the way you know i'll <clears throat> i'll uh, talk about that you know so, as of right now, I guess that's all I got to say about that. I hope everybody has a great day or night, evening, whatever time of day it is that you're seeing this video. Uh, if you could, please, you know, sus subscribe, share, like the video. Uh, you know, all that good stuff to just kind of help me out a little bit. I appreciate it. Y'all have a great day.